I love the sound of popcorn kernels exploding at the theater to create my favorite movie time snack. Time to sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. However, when it comes to things popping during solder reflux, you are probably not relaxed or enjoying the show as components pop off your printed circuit board. If you are involved in RF or microwave PCB design, join us as we learn how to select the right connectors to eliminate that dreaded popping during solder reflow. Welcome to Tech Chat, sponsored by our friends at Mauser Electronics. On Tech Chat, we meet with engineering experts to learn about the latest technical innovations that are shaping and reshaping our world. Today, I'm happy to welcome Evan Bensamana, mechanical design engineer at Amphenol SV Microwave. Welcome to Tech Chat, Evan. Hi, Dale. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm really excited today. So this is a new topic for me to learn about these things. So why don't you tell our audience what we're going to be learning about today? Today, we're going to be learning about reflow-stable RF PCB connectors, oh. how we make them, uh, what goes into making them, and basically the main uses where you would want to use these RF PCB connectors. Well, that sounds great. Let's jump right in. So why go reflow stable? The main reason for using glass seal insulated connectors versus a regular PTFE insulated connector is to uphold connector integrity and durability during solder reflow cycles. PTFE insulated connectors tend to get damaged and distorted through a solder reflow cycle and the glass seal connectors uphold the integrity way better than the PTFE counterpart. You have a large PCB board, like a lot of these big engineering companies do on their big projects, you don't want to have to replace those connectors all the time if they get damaged during a reflow cycle. So the glass seal connectors really help you uh, uphold your connector integrity throughout the cycles. There are multiple features and benefits you get from using glass seal connectors on your PCB board, aside from the fact that you're minimizing the damage of connectors through the reflow cycles. Those features and benefits are listed there. So there's a term here, Evan, that I'm not familiar with. What is the RP height? So RP height is basically from the height from the board to where a cable connector goes into the PCB connector and bottoms. So yes, the height at which the cable connector bottoms to where the board lies. So basically minimizing that height has come to be a challenge, but SVS has overcome that challenge. Okay. And you mentioned before that these are RF PCB connectors. What kind of frequencies are we talking about? So we're talking about in the microwave frequency, actually. So our military customers tend to use products that are in the you know microwave frequency. So we're talking about connectors that can go up to 65 gigahertz, let's say. Okay. That's helpful. Thanks. So this is the problem we are trying to solve. When you use PTFE, the most common dielectric for PCB connectors, they tend to have this nature of growth throughout the solder reflow cycle. As you can see here, the connector is popping off the board, so the signal integrity is going to be affected, and they will most likely have to replace a connector like this on a PCB board. Well, it's kind of fun to watch that, uh, just getting pushed off the board. I assume that's just because of the thermal expansion coefficients are different for the materials. Yes, we're going to get into that in the next slide, and you'll see why this happens, basically. You're right. So when looking at the materials used in these PCB glass seal connectors and comparing them to a regular PTFE PCB connector, we see why we use the Kovar and Corning 7070 glass combo. So when comparing the CTEs of Kovar and Corning 7070 glass, you can see those values are much more similar than the below beryllium and copper and PTFE CTEs. If you don't know what CTE is, it's the coefficient of thermal expansion. When you have more similar values, the materials tend to expand and contract at similar rates. So because Kovar and Corning 7070 glass have similar expansion rates, then it minimizes damage when they're being heated up. The beryllium copper and PTFE combo have much more varying CTE values. So therefore, it's more prone to damage when, say, the PTFE expands in the beryllium copper body that's not expanding as much. Also, what plays a factor is that the melt temp of Corning 7070 glass is 1068, roughly 1068 Celsius, and PTFE is about 315 to 339 Celsius. As you'll see in the next slide, uh, our solder reflow oven uh, profile is reaching about 250 Celsius 
And that is very close to the PTFE melt temp, which means PTFE is much more affected by the temperatures than the glass is. That's interesting, Evan. Now, what is that figure in the upper right corner there? Can you explain what I'm looking at there? So that is a cross section of one of SV's glass seal connectors. Disregard the bubble, that, that was just a feature from the cross-sectioning. But we can see here the body, the green glass, and the in the center contact pin cross-section through. Hmm. And basically the pin and the body would be made of Kovar, and the green is the Corning 7070 glass. You can actually uh, choose kind of whatever color you want to use for the glass, but we just decided to go with green because that's more of an industry standard. Excellent. So to further explain why Kovar and glass sealing is needed, we are displaying here a solder reflow oven temperature profile for SN96 solder, which is considered one of the higher temperature solder types. As you can see here, it reaches a max temperature of 250 degrees Celsius, which is very close to the melt temp of PTFE. But in the general blue area shown there, PTFE as a dielectric runs the risk of warping and popping off the board as shown in the video two slides ago. So for design improvements over PTFE, the left two pictures basically show what, we, what we've already explained, which is uh, the top connector on the left is showing a warped uh, PTFE connector that has popped off the board. And the bottom left picture is showing the SV glass seal connector that has maintained its integrity through a solder reflow cycle. But there are other improvements you gain while using a glass seal connector, aside from the fact that you're minimizing damage on the PCB board. The improvements are first radial captivation. By the glass fusing on the pin, it does not allow the pin to rotate as would a normal barb slash PTFE combo. By not allowing the pin to rotate, we are protecting the integrity of a solder joint as well. Because if you have a rotating pin, if somehow the pin tends to rotate and it's soldered to a board, then the center pin can break that solder joint. The next design improvement we gain by using an SV glass seal connector is tight concentricity of the center contact. We use a high, high class fixture vendors, which hold our tolerances very tight for these fixtures. So that helps us gain a tight concentricity of the center contact, which is important for these PCB uh, connectors that have cable connectors being inserted into them. And the last design improvement we gain by using glass seal connectors is center contact retention. Basically, in the axial direction of the connector, the pin will be held much stronger in the glass than a contact would with a barb in PTFE. To clarify, the barb is what's shown in the top picture coming off the contact. Those spikes coming off the contact is the way they captivate contact in PTFE. Well, Evan, that's a fascinating look inside what's going on in these connectors. There's really a lot of, you know, interesting mechanical engineering design that has to happen to make these connectors be robust. Yes, I agree. And uh, just looking at the internal geometry can tell you a lot of how this connector functions. Yeah, fascinating. And so it's not just the materials that are important, but it's also how those materials are being used in a overall connector design to, to get a high performance, high reliability uh, RS connector then. Yep. A crucial part is having materials that work well together. The fact that the CTEs match up for Kovar and glass is one reason why they, they work well together for these glass seal connectors. The barb in the PTFE, as shown in the top picture, it's not a glass seal connector, but still is very widely used mm. in uh, lots of applications that don't need to have a glass seal connector. So really the combo materials really just depends on your application. Okay. So some target applications we see for these glass seal connectors are listed here. Phase array systems, communication systems, missile guidance systems. These are usually uh, applications that have large PCB boards uh, involved with the creation of them. And they want to start implementing these glass seal connectors so they don't have to keep on replacing the PTFE dielectric connectors that get damaged. So, so I mean, these are very high performance high cost uh, pieces of equipment we're talking about here. So how does the cost of your uh, glass sealed RF connectors relate to a standard connector? And, and, and why should somebody choose your connectors over the more standard connectors? 
So I'd say the SD glass seal connectors and glass seal connectors in general are a bit higher priced than the regular PTFE insulated connectors. However, the cost savings that you receive from using these connectors by not having to replace PTFE connectors on a PCB board, the cost savings is basically greater than the increase in cost for buying the connectors with the amount of connectors you'll be able to use over and over again and not have to throw out. What makes SV's glass seal connectors better than a regular standard connector out in the industry is our high level precision and consistency. Uh, we're using top class fixture vendors and you know we are willing to create custom configurations for a, a willing customer. Yeah, it seems that these are not the type of applications where you need to worry about saving pennies on your connectors to yeah, exactly. And not to mention, you're also saving labor from having to constantly replace these connectors on a PCB board when using PTFE. You're saving labor by not having to do that. And if you ever known, like placing a, a PCB connector on a PCB board is a very intricate process mm -hmm. that takes very much skill and steady hands if you're not using a robot. It's a very, it's a very uh, intricate process that it can be messed up, you know? So it's good to not have to replace these connectors over and over again. Yeah. So here we have listed um, our Amphenol SV Microwave product line for reflow stable PCB connectors. Everything on this list except for three of them are glass seal connectors that SV provides to Mauser. And yeah, three of them are epoxy sealed connectors, which um, add to our reflow stable product line, but they are not necessarily glass seal connectors. Not to mention that SV is continually expanding our glass seal connector database to be able to provide to customers and to distribution and such. So there's a couple of acronyms on here. Uh, you have SB and FD. What are those? In? So the SB is smooth bore and FD is full detent. Those are basically the shrouds that the connectors have. So it takes a lot more force to insert a cable connector into a full detent PCB connector than a smooth board PCB connector. Depending on your application, you would pick one or the other. So there's a lot of choices here, Evan. If somebody was looking to get more guidance uh, than just we talked about today, could they reach out to you guys at Amphenol SV Microwave and, and get some assistance in selecting the right RF connector for their PCB? Oh, most definitely. So we have a large inside sales team that deals with uh, answering those questions. And if they're not able to, they contact engineering and we help out to answer those questions. So we are open, of, especially for glass ceiling. We are trying to uh, expand our customer base for these. So we're more than willing to help select, configure, or design a new connector for you. Evan, as we near the end of today's tech chat, is there any key takeaways you'd like to leave with our audience? Yes, I would, Dale. SV holds our connectors to a high level of integrity, glass seal or not. We can guarantee that we are going to provide the best product that we possibly can for our glass seal connectors. We are, we are hoping to work with uh, various new customers and various existing customers with these glass seal connectors, and we are excited to seeing the business that this brings in. Well, thanks, Evan. I know I learned a lot today. I appreciate having you on Tech Chat today. Thank you, Dale. I appreciate being here. Before we sign off, we want to thank our sponsor, Mauser Electronics. If you're looking to purchase any of these great Amphenol STU microwave products, please head over to mauser.com to help them continue to support educational presentations like this one. And join us again next time on Tech Chat, where we chat with the leading technical experts like Evan Bensamana from industry-leading innovators like Amphenol STU microwave who are changing our world every day.